Hello everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Anil Thakwani. I am director and a senior consultant oncologist uh, at Sharda Hospital, Greater Noida. So uh, we have come up, come up with a uh, new cancer department, which comprises of all the facility like uh, medical oncology, surgical oncology, radiation oncology. Especially radiation oncology, I would like to uh, tell you because uh, we have come up with the latest machine which is uh, linear accelerator and uh, it can do all sort of new uh, like uh, techniques of radiation like uh, image guided radiotherapy stereotactic body radiotherapy and lot other things so today like many other uh, doctors i will not discuss more about oncology okay so basic oncology most of us have already gone through all the uh, uh programs all the lectures so today i will only discuss about the nuances in oncology what does that mean like what is going on in oncology what is new in oncology suppose some patients wants to go for the treatment or comes to us want to come to us for the treatment then what you should discuss with your consultant and uh, what is new and how that new thing is good better than the older thing okay so uh before uh, jumping on the nuances, first of all, I would like to tell you what exactly the cancer is. Cancer is an uncontrolled growth of the cells. Basically, what happens like uh, in our body, the cells are being uh, divided. They are, they are being multiplied in the controlled manner. So whenever there is a lesion anywhere in our hand or anywhere in a body part, then that number of cells are only manufactured by our body machinery, wh whatever are the required. But in cancer, what happens? This control is lost due to certain mutation or any other defective mechanism, which which is a beyond the scope of this uh, talk. So, what happens in that? The cells uh, start multiplying at the uncontrolled manner. They makes the lump, and it creates trouble in a body. So that is why the uh, tumor can be of two types. It can be the benign, which is non-destructive okay until unless this there are symptoms there's no need to do any treatment of that and other is a malignant one what what is malignant tumor oh, malignant tumor is like uh, the tumor this uh, which is made up of that type of cells which has a invading properties like it crosses the barriers and goes in the lymphatics goes in the blood vessels or circulatory system and it spreads to the other part of the body like it, it can go to the brain it can go to the bones it can go to the liver it can go to the spleen like name the body part it can go anywhere and it can and it start troubling that area suppose it, if it goes to the liver it will cause jaundice if it goes to the spleen it will cause pain or bleeding or uh, like many other problems or if it goes to the brain it will cause the seizures and all so wherever it will go it will create symptoms depending upon the work of that uh, organ okay so these are the type of uh, tumors uh, like malignant and benign and uh, now wha where is the fault basically two types of genes are present in the body which who are controlling the multiplication of the cells one are the oncogenes oncogenes usually in the normal humans it is in an inactive form but when there is a mutation it becomes active and it start it give the uh, signals to start multi uh, like it gives the signals to the body to uh, do the uncontrolled multiplication of the cells and the other type of uh, genes are the tumor suppressor genes they are always active in the normal or uh, normal uh, humans and what happens like tumor suppressor genes when they are inactive then they stop suppressing the tumor and tumors uh, like they uh, the cells start dividing in the uh, or they start multiplying in the uh, rampant way so these two type of uh, genetic mutations are there which usually causes cancer so now let us come to the first part of our talk like is cancer preventable in nature so a lot of patients comes to me, they usually ask Dr. Anil like this uh, it was like if they are suffering from the tumor, they ask me, was it preventable? Would add, uh, I would have done anything to prevent that tumor? So this is a very important question and very commonest question 
uh, uh, usually patients are asking from me and even when I'm going for my talks, normal humans are also afraid because you know that every human is at uh, uh, equal risk for getting the cancer. So everybody is concerned like is uh, the cancer preventable in nature. So I'll talk uh, regarding this thing. So yes, cancer is preventable. So first of all, we should know the risk factor. There are a lot of because you know that cancer is a multifactorial disease. A lot of risk factors are there which can cause cancer. So we should try to prevent or we should try to minimize those risk factors which are present in the nature, our lifestyle and lot of other things which I will tell you. So many other things which we consume, they are known, they are well known to increase the risk of cancer in our body like tobacco chewing, excessive alcohol intake, there are infections like uh, infection in female genital infections like it, uh, it gives uh, like right it gives uh, rise to that uh, ca cervix it's uh, basically a part of uterus only so uh, it is because of the infection and if uh, we can easily prevent that by getting vaccinations by maintaining the uh, genital hygiene so uh, a part of this radiation unnecessary radiation suppose uh, you are going to some untrained health care professional so unnecessarily they are doing x-rays unnecessarily they are doing CT scans and lot other things and so these uh, radiations also can cause cancer suppose and radiation is not only in this medical uh, like uh, uh, investigations but you can get the radiation when you are going in the sun you are getting excessive sunlight okay so mild amount of sunlight is necessary for your body to to uh, healthify your bones and all but if you are getting the excessive uh, sunlight you are more prone for the skin cancers so uh, like obesity is another thing like one should always do the exercises and all and should prevent the obesity because obesity again can give rise to a lot of uh, type of cancer like ca breast GI malignancies, gastrointestinal malignancies like stomach cancer, like intestinal cancers. So all these give rise to the uh, these uh, like uh, these type of cancer and environmental pollutants. Nowadays, you know that in a country, developing country like India and other country like African, most of the African countries, we can see that the pollution in the air is very high, especially in these days. So. Uh, we usually inhale that uh, pollutants and it can give rise to the cancer of uh, lungs. So another thing is like uh, uh, pollutants which are present in the environment like uh, asbestos. So asbestos can give rise to the asbestosis and secondary to that we can get special type of lung cancer in that and uh, so we should avoid all these risk factors. So if we try, try to if we want to prevent the cancer to the minimum level though we should follow these uh, advices which we have already discussed so how so as we know that uh, if cancer is there if it is not preventable so our next try should be that we should catch it in the very early stage because you know that can in most of the cancers if we uh, if we catch it in a very early stage there are chances that it can be cured okay now you know that if i if i get cancer uh, catch the cancer in a very early stage stage one or stage two like 70 percent of the cancer can be prevented so uh, i hope that this will give uh, relief to those patients or those people who are very much worried about so we should all we should never deny the symptoms which are coming again and again and which are not being cured by the normal uh, your family doctor so you should directly go to the specialist depending upon what type of symptoms are coming to you so the for that for the early detection of cancer there is a mechanism or there's a technique called screening technique so we usually do the screening test a lot in our country the government uh, like government has uh, uh, provided free of cost the screening uh, 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 screening procedures which catch the tumors in a very early stage so i'll give you the example like in breast cancer breast cancer yearly mammograms are mandatory okay after the age of 25 to 30 years but if the patient is very high risk then we can get it done at a very early stage also and up to 50 to 60 years yearly should be done it should be done so what happens in that we have a bi rate categorization in that if it is an early bi rate no need to worry but if it is bi rate 4 5 6 
then it is uh, there's a need to worry and we uh, we should get further investigated by a doctor okay so other, other is a BRCA gene screening so there is a gene in the body which give rise to the breast cancer and along with the breast cancer few other cancers like uh, ovarian cancers so usually we do this screening in BRCA, BRCA screening in a high risk females like the females in uh, who has a family history of breast cancers or who has a family history of early breast cancer so that type of females uh, should undergo this BRCA gene uh, screening although there is some drawbacks also because it's a very costly test so but when uh, we only do in those patients who are at high risk so we can give the example like Angelina Julie he, she was a film actress still she got this test done because she had a family history and she uh, and she was found positive for this gene and she prophylactically got the bilateral mastectomy done because she was at a very high risk of cancer so she thought to get the, get rid of the natural breast and then there was a mammoplasty which was done and she is as good as she was before now okay and the second screening test can be done in a cervical cancer cervical cancer what we can do is that very simple test is there pap smear it is known as a pap smear we do we take the only the smear through the uh, front passage of the female and then we just see it in a slide if we can see the abnormal cells then we undergo uh, further investigations if we don't see the abnormal test no need for further investigation and this uh, the cervical like uh, smear, pap smear is done usually once in a year and uh, uh, it is usually recommended at the, after the age of 15 16 years and goes up to 50 years again the lung cancer in the lung cancer it is now it is very common because of the smoking because of the pollutants in the air so in lung cancer we usually uh, we avoid doing screening but in the high risk patient we can do the ldct low dose ct scan we can do and we can try to catch the tumor in a very early stage so that it is curable again the prostate cancer there are certain tumor markers like psa prostate specific antigen which by taking the 5 ml of blood we can measure it okay so if it is uh, increasing very rapidly which is known as a psa velocity so it it is a sign that uh, patient may suffer from prostate cancer immediately we undergo that patient with uh, further investigations so again this is an, uh, another screening test if it is found positive then we can start treating and we can cure the patient again if we come to the colon cancer like GI tract cancer what happens in that uh, like again the screening test is uh, some tumor markers like CEA carcinoma embryonic antigen and the other screening test can be occult blood testing also like we can test the blood in the uh, feces of the patient if uh, the if it is positive for the blood then we can enter colonoscopy and further test so this was about the screening test which will help us to detect cancer in an early stage and will help us to cure the patient and indirectly will help us to prevent the disease so uh, this was uh, like now we come to the vaccines now vaccines we have developed vaccines in few cancers which can prevent a patient getting cancer how so as we know that a ca cervix like carcinoma cervix cancer cervix which is in a female genital organs uh, usually most of the time it is caused by the infection of human papilloma virus it's a type of virus if the female is infected with that virus then she can have 50 percent more chances of getting cervical cancer as compared to the normal female and the human papilloma virus can also cause the head neck malignancies also so if we prevent a person getting infection with the human papilloma virus then we can prevent getting cancer in 50 percent of the patients so there are vaccines which are available for ca cervix with the name of guard gardasils and cervarates there are a lot of difference between the vaccines some vaccines are bivalent vaccine some vaccines are the polyvalent vaccine polyvalent vaccines means like they can prevent the infection of multiple serotypes of virus different type of virus so they are more effective and they are more costly also now the best part is that our country in india we will we have started manufacturing this vaccine here only at a very cheaper rate so because earlier it used to come from the uh, european countries from west and it was very costly but now in, we have started manufacturing this vaccine on our own it is very cheap and all the and soon uh, our government will include it in the national immunization programs also so in india we will be getting uh, these vaccines at a very 
cheaper rates. So another like this was about the human papilloma virus vaccine. So the serotypes are uh, human papilloma virus 16, 18, which are very commonly infecting the females. Other rare types are the 6, 11, 16, uh, 6 and 11 also. So this was about the CA cervix, which is related with the human papilloma virus. So now we come to the hepatocellular carcinoma, ca cancer of the liver. It is also caused by certain infection of the liver which is uh, infected by the hepatitis B virus. So what happens uh, when the patient gets infection with hepatitis B virus? Patients get infection of the liver. There's a uh, like, uh, uh, like there are different types of like regrowth of the cells and ultimately it leads to fibrosis in the liver and it causes cirrhosis. It's a condition of the liver where the liver cells dies rapidly and uh, at the end cirrhosis is there when all of the liver stops working patient can have jaundice and all everything so once the patient is having cirrhosis he has more chances to get hepatocellular carcinoma cancer of uh, liver so better we should avoid infection of hepatitis b virus by getting vaccines it's very simple and very uh, very cheaply available in india so uh, we should get the vaccines three doses of vaccines are there and then booster doses are uh, taken later on and it prevents the patient uh, getting infection with hepatitis B virus. So usually we, we can avoid this hepatocellular carcinoma by getting this vaccine. So uh, now this was how we can prevent. The other point is how can cancer be diagnosed without complex biopsy procedure. Sometimes what happens, a uh, patient has lung cancer. We, it is very difficult to diagnose. It cannot be uh, biopsied from uh, bronchoscopy. So we need to insert needle in, inside the chest to get the biopsy done still in all the uh, big hospitals in all the european countries people are doing this but now we have come up with a certain test which is known as a liquid biopsy or circulating tumor cells what happens we don't need anything we don't need to insert any needle inside the body of the patient what we can do is that we can take 5 ml of sample just you give your sample for your bl simple blood test routine blood test we have to take 5 ml of sample and in that sample, there are the tumor cells which are present and we can detect it with the latest technique and we can take out that cell from that 5 ml sample and without damaging the patient's body, without creating any havoc, without having any side effects. Like if we insert the needle inside the chest of the patient, there can be pneumothorax. Like air can fill inside the uh, lungs and it can give rise to sudden like uh, cardiac arrest or whatever the sudden emergencies. So we can uh, avoid that situation by doing this uh, simple test which is known as a CTC, circulating tumor cells or liquid biopsy. So this is again uh, and we are doing in our hospital very well these type of tests and again this is the new thing which has come up. So guys no need to worry nothing to worry if you are suspecting any cancer do come to us so that we can diagnose it with a very simple with, uh, with the help of 5 ml uh, blood sample so uh, so this was about like the third thing which we uh, plan to discuss like suppose some patients have got the treatment the standard treatment chemotherapy radiotherapy surgery and again, in 50% of the patient, there is a residual disease even after doing spending thousands of your dollars in that or uh, there's residual or after some time, once the patient is cured, there are chances of the disease to come again. So in those cases, what to do? Then patient lose hopes, even the doctors lose hope. But nothing to worry in that also because we have come up with the latest treatment for this thing. So if we see the medical management, now we have come up with the new drugs which are another target therapy now what how exactly it works so target therapy what it do how it is different from the chemotherapy chemotherapy when we were injecting it it was acting in whole of the body okay and after acting in the whole of the body of course it was killing the tumor cells but along with the killing of tumor cells it was also killing the normal organs also and because of that there were a lot of side effects in the patient and patient used to uh, feel weak and a lot of things but now we have come up with the targets and target therapy although they are a bit costlier than the normal chemotherapy but they have a very good results without having the side effects or very less side effects okay the other category of drug is a hormonal therapy so hormonal therapy again 
most of the hormonal therapy they have minimal side effect because usually we just manipulate the hormones which are present in the body which give rise to the cancer like in a prostate cancer the male hormone androgens they give rise to the cancer so we block that androgen with the help of hormone therapy anti androgens it is no it is known as or agonist or antagonist we are using both the things so it was a, but in, in breast cancer also the, there is a female hormone known as estrogen which give rise to the breast cancer so we do what we do is that we block that hormone with the help of estrogen receptor progesterone receptor blockers so we block that hormones and uh, which ultimately lead to killing of the uh, breast cancer cells so uh, again the third category of medicines which are available is immunotherapy it is very well uh, like known amongst the patient what is immunotherapy basically it's a immune checkpoint inhibitors what happens in that uh, suppose we have a immune system which fights with the normal tumor cells but sometimes tumor cells are becomes more stronger uh, than the uh, uh, immune uh, immune system so our immune system becomes weak so why it is weak the, because uh, if it is strong in the normal patients also then what will happen it start damaging our own body so that is why there are the checkpoints which are there which checks the immune system to be in the limit but when cancer is there then what we do that immunotherapy it inhibits the immune checkpoints that is why they are known as the immune checkpoint inhibitors so we remove the checkpoints from the in from the way of immune system and it that immune system works on the tumor cells and it kills the tumor cells this is a new again uh, new therapy which has come up uh, uh, in the uh, in the coming years and the examples of these drugs are nivolumab ipilimumab pembrolizumab and along with that this was a specific uh, uh, this immunotherapy there are non specific immunotherapies also like bcg vaccines and all which is being used in a ca urinary bladder in early stages and it helps to increase the immunity and kill the tumor cells then and there only so uh, one more thing which most of us have heard is a car t cell therapy basically what exactly is this it is also a type of immunotherapy it's a latest thing so what happens like uh, t cells are in a body which is a part of immune system which kills the tumor cells by reacting uh, uh, from their anti uh, from the receptors which are present over the t cells they receptor those receptor are attached to the tumor cells and they kills the tumor cells but sometimes tumor cells become more smart they change their receptors so that they are not found by a normal t cells so what what happens in that we have made the genetically engineered uh, t cells so what happens uh, like we take out the t cells from the body of the uh, human the same patient we do the genetic engineering in that so as to develop the receptor special receptors which are known as chimeric antigen receptors known as a car okay so chimeric antigen receptor car of t cell that is why it is known as a car t cell therapy so we just genetically we do the engineering in that so as to develop the special type of receptor over the t cells and then we multiply it uh, outside the body only and then start we start infusing in the patient just like we transfuse the blood we as when we start infuse then it kills the tumor cells and it uh, works very uh, in a very great way although not in not in all tumors it has been the research has been done but research has been done in few tumors like uh, non solid malignancies most of the leukemias lymphomas multiple myelomas so and we there are a lot of more work is doing uh, going on internationally in india and we are waiting for uh, the things to come up in a better way so this was about the medical treatment now we talk about the radiation treatment now what is new in radiation how can we treat the patient who have already uh, got all the treatment and uh, they have got recurrence or there is a residual disease so these situations become tough for both for the treating physician and for the patients also okay because all the already patient has got lot of side effects uh, after getting the treatment so earlier the normal radiation was there like conventional radiotherapy 3d crt so now we have come up with a intensity modulated radiotherapy we have come up with a image guided radiotherapy we have come with a brachytherapy newer techniques in a brachytherapy and we have come with a stereotactic body radiotherapy as brts where we deliver very high dose in a very limited amount of volume of the tumor so it's again the very famous 
uh, amongst the doctors who are treating the recurrence of residual disease. So uh, it can be done with the linear accelerator, which I told you uh, in the start that we have come up with that machine. And we are doing these type of treatments. Uh, the patients who are not getting relief uh, by getting uh, treatment from other hospitals, they are coming to us and we are treating uh, the, those type of patients. So again, there are a lot different type of radiation like gating radiation. What is gating? Gating usually, we usually do in the tumors of the breast who are at the left side of the breast. Why gating in that uh, left side of the breast? Because you know that left side have heart also. When you give radiation, normal radiation to the breast, it goes to the heart also and it, it creates trouble. Like it creates a heart failure later in the life and it creates problem in the life of the patient. So by doing the gating radiation, we can prevent uh, radiation going deeper inside uh, the uh, this uh, heart and we can treat the uh, normal uh, breast in those cases. So uh, likewise, there are certain like electrons also. We usually we treat the patient with the photons, but we can uh, treat the patient with electrons also with the help of the uh, linear accelerator. So this was the uh, new thing in the uh, radiation also and uh, thank you and now if you have any questions please let me know so that we can discuss question from mr jishan okay so uh question from uh, mr jishan is there like my wife is only 35 years old and uh, we had done the surgery, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Is there any chance to prevent this? See, Mr. Jishan, first of all, I just want to know what type of malignancy was it. Okay. And uh, second thing is that what is uh, now condition of the patient? Have we done, have we done the follow-up investigations? If there are, there's no disease in those investigations, nothing to worry. Be in touch with your doctor or be in touch with us so that we can evaluate her time to time. And uh, as soon uh, as uh, if uh, unfortunately if disease comes, then we'll uh, start treating her and we'll try to cure her. So uh, there's another question by Mr. A.K. Azad for head neck cancer uh, patient. Uh, for head neck cancer patient done his first chemotherapy on 20th December 23 but as of today his hiccup yet to stop age 62 what's the reason second chemo date is 10 January so Mr. Azad nothing to worry this is the normal side effect of few malignancies where hiccups can be, can be there but hiccups can be treated by your local physician you can be in touch with your local physician or your oncologist they will give you certain medications but that medications should not be taken without the guidance so better you be in touch uh, with your uh, doctor, baclofen is there, which uh, treats uh, the hiccups which are created uh, by which are caused by the chemotherapy. But uh, again, I'll advise you not to take the medicine without the expert guidance because again, these medicines have a side effects. I hope uh, I have made you understand. Sir, we have one more question: How to manage uh, identify early stage of cancer? Like yeah, Addy. So there's a question from uh, a viewer, Addy. So Addy. Your question is like how to uh, identify, early identify tumor in an early stage. In my talk, I have already discussed this thing. Like if you want to identify tumor in an early stage, there are the screening tests available everywhere. They are available in your country. If you are in India, there are a lot of tests which are available in European, in the West. They are doing it under the national uh, this uh, program of, by the government free of cost. So there are certain tests like pap smear, like mammography, like occult fetal, fecal blood testing and lot more like LDCT and there are a lot more tests which are present in the market. You can get it done with the help by consulting with your physician or with the oncologist. Okay, done. So I hope that uh, I have made myself clear in my this talk and uh, we'll be in touch again. Yeah, there's one more question. Right. So, uh, Mr. Jay Siddiqui is asking, how effective is a linear accelerator or is there any disadvantages as per the observations shows previously? Mr. Siddiqui, uh, the, uh, right, this is a very nice query which uh, usually comes to me by my patients or by my listeners. Like, are there any side effect of linear accelerator? See, 
all treatment whatever the treatment is available in the market there are certain side effects okay of the treatment like if you undergo the chemotherapy target therapy immunotherapy what of car t cell therapy every everybody has every treatment has its own side effect but what we do that is why you can get the treatment anywhere but you go to your oncologist because we are trained to see like side effects are more or good effects are more okay we evaluate that thing and we only advise the treatment when the good effects are more sometimes we tell my pa- i tell my patients there's no need for radiation just go home and don't take any treatment the reason is because side effects are more and the good effects which i can get is less so i avoid but when the side effects is less and good effects are more we usually go with the treatment and the th- second part of the question was like what type of side effects will i get so uh, i cannot tell you uh, actually because it all depends upon the area where the radiation is being given okay so different areas have different side effects okay i hope you have one more question from sajad mohammad saju so sajad uh, saju there's one more question is asked by him like my father is a prostate cancer patient now he is locally advanced as per the biopsy and mri report sir could you please advise about the treatment cost so uh, sajad see basically metastatic prostate cancer there are around 10 types of treatment okay and what type of treatment i'll give to my patient will depend upon his health will depend upon the different blood test so on this program i cannot tell you the uh, uh, cost but we we have lot of treatments where we can modify the cost like some cheaper treatments are also available and some better treatments are also available so we usually decide by discussing it with the patient we give everything to the patient we tell everything to the patient and then i leave on patient to decide which treatment he wants to get but we have all types of treatment and uh, we can give it the cheaper price also and we can give the better one also so miss parveen is asking question from bangladesh so miss parveen uh, like sir my daughter is to join very sick of premature blood decrease but her poor report so basically uh, this type of cancer like uh, like uh, her hemoglobin goes down every time and uh, bone marrow is normal so maybe this not related to the cancer basically there is some malabsorption there can be some uh, parasitic infestation so she needs proper evaluation by the physician first okay because if bone marrow is normal nothing to worry there is some uh, normal uh, thing which is not making her blood to go up so better you go to your hematologist or the general physician he'll solve your problem sir one domestic question <coughs> so there's one more question from uh, up like uh, what is a basal and squamous cell skin cancer and has the skin grown deeply in, into the skin has it spread to the nearby area or to other parts of the body so basically you know that our skin has different layers okay the upper is a squamous cell there are certain cells which are basal cells also the deeper one so the cells which are multiplying depends uh, like if there is a basal cell carcinoma so basal layer is multiplying if squamous cell carcinoma the superficial cells is multiplying so if we catch it in an early stage it will be most of the time it will be localized only and only surgery can be done in these type of cases and there is no need for any chemotherapy or uh, radiotherapy in those cases but the tumors which has not been concentrated on and uh, they have become bigger size is bigger so there are more chances that it has spread to your body so we need to do certain test to in order to know whether it has spread or it is localized because if it has spread then uh, we do chemotherapy and radiotherapy but if it is not spread then usually with the help of surgery and uh, uh, radiotherapy it goes away so sir mohammad kishan is asking follow up question uh, is there any treatment that exists to control this what uh, he is asking for a question mm-hmm. so uh, like uh, one more patient who asked previous question like she uh, uh, his wife has a metastatic breast cancer it has spread so in bangladesh the doctors have told that there's only the palliative treatment but uh, we'll have to see the patient there are a lot of treatments which are available now for the advanced uh, cancer also we see the patient and definitely will give the best of the uh, treatment which is available in the world here at sharda hospital
So now my request to all my listeners and all my viewers is to keep asking the question and we'll reply there uh, on uh, the digital platform independently to all the patients. Thank you and take care.